Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It is March 7th. This happens to be the eve of March 8th, which is in the Jewish calendar, the festival of Purim. Uh, it happens to be, uh, uh, it happens to fall on the 8th uh, of March this month, which is, of course, the 14th of the month of Adar. And the tradition of Purim is fascinating. Uh, it is a, a time of festival and glee for the Jews because it commemorates the overthrow of someone who had tried to wipe out the Jewish nation as a whole uh, using every trick in the book. And hit the evil Haman, of course, in the court of King Ahasuerus is the villain of Purim. Purim, about 480 B.C., King Ahasuerus uh, at his winter palace called Shushan in Persia was putting on a, a great festival for his subjects, had a banquet, and at that banquet he demanded that his queen Vashti make an appearance because he wanted to show off her great beauty, legendary beauty. Well, she uh, apparently wasn't feeling up to it or something. She refused to come down to the banquet which, of course, uh, embarrassed the king greatly. And uh, he decided on the spot, in a fit of passion, to cast her aside and to find another queen. In the process, uh, Esther, uh, in a sort of beauty pageant, was discovered by the king, and she was made his queen. Esther uh, was her Persian name. Hadassah was her Jewish name because she was a Jew. And she lived uh, in and served in the court of King Ahasuerus of Persia uh, along with her cousin Mordecai. And the two of them uh, worked together in an amazing way to promote uh, the fate of the Jews. Of course, the Jews uh, as captives in Persia uh, did not fare very well. And when Haman, under King Ahasuerus, rose to power as his first in command, Haman, uh, who hated the Jews, came up with a legal method, at least he thought he had a legal method, of overthrowing the Jews forever, destroying every last one of them by law. He obtained a favor from King Ahasuerus, and then he began to cast lots, which was the Persian custom. And that, of course, is where the name Purim comes from. <clears throat> Pur uh, is a word root that means a lot or something like a dice. And Purim would be a couple of dice. Now, I'm not sure if they look like today's dice, but, but Haman, intent on destroying the Jews, uh, using the, this method of divination that is casting lots, decided that he would come up with the best day for pulling off his evil trickery. And he began to cast lots. He came up with a perfect day <clears throat> and a perfect method for destroying the Jews, only to discover at the last minute, because of uh, Mordecai's interaction with King Ahasuerus, that his plot had been overthrown. In other words, he threw the dice, and the dice threw him. And so Purim came to be understood as a festival that marks the inexplicable fall of a plot and a plan, which seems on the verge of success but suddenly crashes. And, and in this case, Haman wanted to destroy the Jews. He ended up being hung on his own gallows. Mordecai and, and Esther ended up being hero and heroine in the story, and everything was overturned uh, in an in inexplicable moment. What you thought was going to happen would no longer happen. And so Purim is a festival revered by the Jews as a day of rejoicing because it marks the inexplicable fall of the enemy who is about to destroy them. It's really fascinating. Uh, an anecdote here uh, illustrates how this has come down to uh, our modern world. Uh, back in the days of World War II, <clears throat> Of course, there was a man who wanted to destroy the Jews. His name was Adolf Hitler, and he came up with what he termed the final solution to destroy each and every last single Jew, much in the manner of Haman back in the days of Persia, 480 B.C. 
Hitler, uh, as is well known now, uh, devised the evil machinery of the Holocaust, hauling Jews off and burning them in the ovens and, and uh, doing this with German efficiency. And it was his calculation and the calculation of those who surrounded him that Germany, Germany could at last be free uh, of what they uh, considered to be their greatest problem, the presence of the Jews. And interestingly enough, Hitler failed when he was on the verge of success, just like Haman. And like Haman, he thought he could destroy all the Jews, and boom, everything changed. This was recognized by the Germans, and there is a famous incident that illustrates this. When Julius Stryker, who was, uh, was hanged for his war crimes, he ascended the gallows and famously made a pronouncement just before he was hanged. Three times in German, he cried out, Purim, 1946, Purim, 1946, Purim, 1946. The trap was sprung and he plunged to his death. Uh, Julius Stryker was a brilliant man. He was a writer. He was a planner. He was Hitler's minister of propaganda. And in the end, he realized that he and Germany as a whole had played the role of the evil Haman uh, the, in, a, in, a, in a twirl of the dice or the lots or the poor, Purim. Everything was changed. What was up was now down. What was down was now up. And fascinatingly, when you go back to the book of Esther and you read about uh, the first Purim, what you read is that God is nowhere to be found in the book of Esther. You can read the book from one end to the other, and the name of God doesn't appear. The personality of God doesn't appear. In fact, it's the only book in the Bible where God is not seen at all, and yet his presence, that is his will, uh, it, it runs all the way through the book as a kind of a, a, an undercurrent, a theme that he's always watching, even though you can't see him, even though you think he's not there, he's always watching, and when you least expect it, things are going to be turned over uh, in favor of God's chosen ones. Whoever they may be, God's elect will always pop out on top. And this is the story of the Bible. It is the story of Purim. So uh, we've received quite a few emails lately and some snail mail as well. And by the way, we love your mail. Keep it coming. Uh, asking the question, since Purim happens on the 8th of March this year, is it possible that like it was in the days uh, of King Ahasuerus in four, 480 B.C., there will be some kind of a prophetic overturn? in modern Persia, because there's a man standing up today, and his name is Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. He's standing up and calling for the destruction, the complete annihilation of the Jews. In fact, all of the leaders of Persia are united in that single intent. They want to destroy the Jews. It's fascinating that they are modern Persians. People are rightly asking, <clears throat> what will happen to them? Will they be successful in their plan? their evil schemes, or like Haman, will they be overturned in an instant and hanged upon their own gallows? You know, I can't say, but it's a, it's a good question. And of course, we'll be watching Persia, Iran, with all their nuclear weapons, and all of their people who want to wipe out the Jews on this Purim, the 8th of March. Keep watching, we're watching, and by the way, keep looking up. <laughs>